and welcome back to the Ellie Way Show, where we talk all things business, lifestyle, and adulting. And today we are going to be hitting back on uh, the 818 business chats uh, just for a little bit, uh, just because I wanted to talk about something very specific. Um, today we're going to be talking about leading by example and leadership. Um, I'm very excited for this episode because um, there's just there's a lot to leadership that I think um, there's a lot of questions about it, questions that even I have. I'm going to be vulnerable about my experience with um, leadership and developing as a leader and all these types of things, and I've got 45 minutes to do it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to uh, just remind you really quick. If you guys have um, are new, I just want to welcome you to the Ellie Way Show. Um, uh, my name is Ellie, and you can hear a little bit more about my story um, under my journey to entrepreneurship. I talk a lot about my story, my uh, lifestyle, how I got into business, things like that, um, my reason why, and I go into a little bit of my dance career there as well. Um, recently, I released a podcast as well um, last week's, which was a Q&A. Um, a lot about career, my lifestyle, a bit of everything. Um, and then then let's see what else oh you can also support this podcast monthly as little as 99 cents a month to as high as nine dollars 99 cents a month um and you can do this by going to anchor.fm slash the ellie way with dashes in between um it will be linked in the show notes as well uh, for you guys. And yeah, it's just a way that you can support the podcast. Um, of course, it's optional. It is appreciated. Um, it helps this podcast run uh, the way it should. And it helps me um, be able to fund some projects that I've got going on in the future, such as writing books, coming out with courses, all those types of things. So um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, and yeah, I'm so happy to have you guys here today. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about leading by example and these things. I posted in my 818 business chat group recently about um, leading by example and it was a meme and I love memes. Memes are really great. They're a great visual way to kind of communicate what um, what you're trying to say. It communicates a story. It communicates um, a point. It is very effective, especially to my generation, Generation Z and it's very good to kind of um, just communicate what's going on in the world and those in those types of scenarios. It's very to the point and very short and kind of jokey, but it, there's reality to it. And um, it was just, it was so good. And it really made me think about why aren't we as leaders leading by example? We expect all these things from other people. We're expecting these things from, um, you know, people on, you know, that are coming into our businesses being like, hey, I need a job. And we're expecting them to just know everything straight off the bat. How does that work? Like, it, and the whole storyline behind the meme um, is you'll have to join the group to actually see it. But um, the whole storyline behind the meme was um, this this man is going to a job interview and the, the interviewer asks, um, how much experience do you have? And the, and the person says, I have none. And so he says, I hope you can get experience here. You're hired. And that, I was just like, yes, that is exactly what we need in this world. This is exactly what businesses need to do. This is exactly what corporations need to do. I mean, you think of all the people that are trying to find jobs and they're like, I have no experience. I have the qualifications, but I'm not getting hired. Why? And it's all boiling down to the expectations of your boss. And really, it comes down to it. Is it laziness? Is that a question that we're not asking when we don't? hire somebody when we don't take the time to train um, people that are coming into uh, our stores to do whatever or we're not when we hire people and they don't have much experience are we taking the time to actually share with them hey this is how things go are we taking the time to actually teach them how to do these things and if we're not as the leaders as the bosses as the managers well are we being lazy that's just, I mean, it's a straight up question. Is laziness a huge part of why we try and hire people that are, uh, that are a little more experienced? Um, 
Is that a big part of things? And to me, yes, I think it is. I think it's a huge thing. They don't want to take risks because um, taking risks, things get messy. And if people and businesses are really in the best interest of um, really wanting to see people succeed, if they're really about those types of things, then why aren't they taking the time to train people? Why aren't they taking the time to do these things? And so my thing is, if we're going to be in business or if you're going to go into anything let's say that you get promoted to manager or you become a boss or you become your own boss or you're in a business whatever that looks like you have to be the leader that's setting the example even if you're on the low totem pole even if you're just an employee set an example for other people to come in and understand the culture like i i am my own boss i am my own business person i'm also a leader in um in the church um at my church i'm the children's director um which is kind of ironic and i'll talk a little bit about that as well um but i'm also an employee at my dance studio so as a teacher as an employed teacher I am expected to go and teach these kids how to do ballet, right? So that's what I've been hired for. And um, the teacher that I've been hired by, I've known for years. She knows I'm credible. She knows that um, I know what I'm talking about. She knows that my intention is not to hurt a student or not to cause drama. She knows my intention on that. But the thing is, is that, and I'm not comparing myself to other teachers, but I'm saying in my experience as a student, I have compared my teacher teachers in the way that they teach and so you know I had a teacher that was incredibly dedicated to making sure she raised a whole dancer somebody that was dedicated to um the well-being of who I was my mental state my emotional state my health my my physical state um and to teach me dance and that was her mission and goal was to create a whole dancer Um, and I had another teacher that was really more interested in what I had to offer in the sense of technique and could I give her all my money and I chose to do other things and this particular teacher that um, I did not gel well so uh, so much with um, because I didn't stay at this one studio and because I moved around and because I had all these other aspirations that I was going after um, I was rejected multiple times and I was um, put in a space of humiliation multiple times as a dancer and I've um And I was put, and this was as a student, this wasn't even a professional career, so I just want to make that clear. Um, But as a student, I was put in places of humiliation. I was put in places that I didn't belong, frankly. There were parents and other, you know, peers of mine uh, that were confused on why I was getting some of the things that I was getting, why I was doing some of the things I was doing. And for me, it was just a whole load of drama that I ended up giving up because I just didn't, I couldn't stand it anymore. Um, The toxic culture at that studio was so placed. And so for me, when I I walk in and as a professional dancer I've experienced my own level of toxicity as a freelance dancer working with other um, freelance artists and you know these dance these ballets and things like that Um, teaching even in teaching taking class from um, other teachers around like I have gained a lot of experience in the sense of I know how I want to run my class and now I'm getting my degree as a teacher so when it comes to education, right, when it comes to being a leader, part of being a leader is educating the people. And if you are not willing to take the time and you're not willing to have the patience, frankly, to um, pour into these people and to teach these people how to do these things, then you're not fit to be a leader. That is just a plain and simple thing. And if you want to be a leader and you find yourself struggling in the patience arena, trust me, I understand that wholeheartedly. I am not the most patient person. You can ask um, my, my parents parents you can ask my siblings you can ask my boyfriend I have had to really 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 work on my patience and sometimes patience for me looks like not being judgmental on people's actions right off the bat and that you know is a whole other thing but again I figured out how I wanted to lead my classes I figured out this the culture and the environment I wanted to raise these kids up in and I've talked about it before most kids are spending majority of their time at school and majority of their time in extracurricular activities and most of these kids are not spending majority of their time with their parents it's just it's not the case especially if you're on a dance team especially if you're in school public school extracurriculars I mean it just 
just goes off the it, it, it goes down the list like you're just not around your parents and your family very much so sometimes the only voices that they really get um that are solid voices that are really training them for the world that are really dedicated to their well-being um hopefully dedicated to their well-being i should say are the teachers in extracurricular activities um or the teachers that are in schools and the guidance counselors and the youth services specialists and the principals and and all the people that work in the education system and i would hope I would hope to high heaven that you as an educator or work as someone that's working in the education system actually has the well-being of these kids in your hands. I I really genuinely hope that. I know a ton of educators. They are wonderful people. Um, And one of my best friends is an educator and she um, she teaches. She's a youth services specialist and she creates curriculum. So she is dedicated to the well-being of kids. And I'm not saying all teachers aren't, but my concern with leadership right now is there are people put in places of leadership and they don't think that they're leaders because they think they're on the bottom of the totem pole people in business you're leaders whether you are leading a team or mentoring two people you're a leader if you're mentoring two people or even one person you're a leader parents you are leaders you are leaders of your households you are leaders in your families you are leaders of your children educators teachers you are leaders <laughs> just because you can't you know just because you're not the one writing the legislation or making the decisions or you're not the you know superintendent of schools does not mean that you're not a leader you get to choose how to influence your classes you get to choose how to influence these minds and so you have to really decide you know and i wrapping this all back up into business you have to decide what kind of precedence you want to set. And so for me, I really struggled with trying to figure out, okay, like especially when I was working with with a team now um, and in multiple different areas, I had to figure out, okay, what kind of leader do I want to be? What kind of culture do I want to set? What do I want to be known for as a leader? And do I care about being on the forefront? And to be honest, I don't care about building, I don't care about being the forefront. I don't care about being famous. I don't care about any of that stuff I just want to see people succeed so if that means I'm behind the scenes doing the work those types of things then I'm happy and I'll give an example of that um you know I used to think that the only way to reach people um to you know or to be known even like I I just thought the only way to reach people was to be known Whether it was with my blog or this YouTube channel, this podcast or anything like that, I used to think it was about being known. Um, And as a dancer, that was what I was going for was professional dance career, which means you're on stage all the time. And so my goal was to become at least a soloist because then I'm at the forefront of the the, you know, performance. And then I realized as a teacher that I'm doing much more impact to impact these kids, these parents, um, you know, a- anybody that I come into contact with, I am making more of an impact there as a leader because I'm leading in that aspect and setting um, the example and hopefully leading by example in what I'm trying to teach, what I'm trying to cultivate in the environment I'm trying to create, um, the culture I'm trying to create with, you know, still respecting the culture that's been set, um, with my, you know, with my studio owner, you know, we have a great relationship. And so I want to be respectful of the culture she's setting and also be able to amplify it and come behind her and really support her in that way. And that's what we have to do as business owners. If you have a business where you hire people, um, you know, as you know, for Life on Point, for instance, I had a team once and um, I've had many interns come in and, you know, come and go and they've learned skills. I've taught these people how to learn skills and then they go out and then they use them. That's fine with me. I don't care if they stay. My goal is that they left with something more than what they came in with. And that's my job as a leader is to lead these people and help raise them up and give them a little leg up in an area that maybe they don't understand so well so that they can go out and they can get better at it. And that is what a leader does. And my concern with leadership right now is that leadership... There's not all leaders, and I'm not fitting all leaders into one box, but I'm saying there are a lot of leaders that are interested in their own ambitions and in their own success that they're leaving trail bodies behind. I know it's a morbid kind of statement, 
but that is the case, isn't it? And it's across the board. It's not just in business. It's in business, education, arts and entertainment, media, government, uh, you know, family, all these things like religion, those it happens. It happens. And that's because we are not taking the time ourselves to really pour in to the people that can be leaders. We are trying as the leader, you know, if you're a good leader, then or you're at a higher level of leadership, you're probably the one that's like, I, you probably get paid way more than everybody else, I would hope. And, you know, traditional and business wise, let's say like the CEO of the company is not going to take majority of the time to go train your people right? That's the person that makes the the strongest decisions. They're the ones that make all the decisions. And potentially, they are the least busy and they're filling their time with other things. I'm not saying this again. I'm not saying this to fit everybody in one box, but I'm saying if you're going to lead by example, if you're going to be in a high level of leadership, sometimes it looks like in order to create other leaders, you have to raise them up. And if you didn't create a strong cast of leaders, I, you know, I don't know why, just put it in that box. If you don't, if you don't raise up a strong team of leaders the first time, then you're going to have to keep either pouring into into them and figuring out what's working, what's not, change what's not working to help them, or you're going to have to find new leadership. Because sometimes people don't want to be leaders and people are going to make the decisions to not be leaders and they're going to not do the things that leaders would do. And that's okay. Some people are better at following. Some people are better at leading. But if you're in a position of leadership, such as being a parent or being a teacher or being a business owner or being a decision maker, a manager, a boss, then you have to be able to do these things, even if you don't like doing them. Trust me, it's not easy. And, you know, I I personally have struggled really badly with what does it look like to be a leader in all fronts again i'm spread a little bit thinner than most people i think um in the sense that i'm doing multiple things in multiple arenas so i'm a leader in dance as a teacher um i am a leader in business as running three different businesses and i am a leader in my church and so i've had to figure out okay my leadership level in business and in business consulting has been quite strong as far as my track record is concerned and as far as my um, assessment, if you will. The people that I've, um, you know, been hired by, um, that I've worked for them on a business level have um, been very happy and satisfied with the way that I've worked and the way that I've consulted their business. So I know that in that sense, I've had to do a lot of leadership on that front. And so I've been able to um, I have that security in knowing that it's not just me thinking I'm a good leader, um, which I know I'm not a great leader. So I know there's a lot of things I have to work on as well. But the my main goal with leadership is that I'm setting the example. In church, it's been very difficult too because I've had to kind of, I've been cast over with this shadow of being a pastor's kid. And so being a pastor's kid, you're either the rebel or you're the one ministry. And I am neither. <laughs> um, I I mean, I love my family and I love the, you know, the ministry mandate that they have. But I know that I personally am not necessarily called to, um, you know, um, uh, to ministry in that way. To being a pastor um, is, you know, probably the... Uh, vocational ministry is the word I was looking for. I know I'm not called a vocational ministry. I know that I will always have something to do with the church. I am a strong Christian. I believe in Jesus and I that will never change. Um, and, you know, but I know that I'm not going to be necessarily a pastor for the rest of my life. And then you have dance over here. <laughs> so then you have me being a leader here because I'm a teacher. This is my career. This is what I am planning to do with my life. I am a dance coach. I dance coach privately uh, through Life on Point and I I also am a coach with studios and I also get guest invitations to go speak um, and lecture at different places or I, you know, uh, teach classes and whatnot. So this I'm very used to in that way. And as a, you know, teacher, a lot, of, you know, I'm going to school to further my ability to lead a class, to teach a class. Um, in church, I'm reading more books, you know, readers are leaders. And so that is the thing. If you want to become a better leader, then you have to pick up a book and start reading. <laughs> like it has to be a book about, you know, you have to also have a level of, um, you have to have a level of, self-awareness 
that is very hard to reach and I'm not saying that I've reached this point of self-awareness I just know I know myself and I can say like I know that I have to work on not being judgmental and (laughs) that is just something that I struggle with I'm a very pessimistic person um, by nature Um, so I have to really be careful that I leave that pessimism behind and actually move forward and look at them from their potential from what I see in them um, through a better lens um, through a better attitude and so even in the way I do things when I don't want to do things like there are some things that I just don't want to do and let me tell you behind closed doors when I'm at home and I don't want to clean the kitchen yeah I probably have a little bit of an attitude or I don't want to do the bathroom or you know things like that sometimes it really ticks me off and I really don't want to do them but I have to do them um but when it comes to things that where I'm being watched quote unquote um I really have to, I really try and be careful of being having gratitude in everything I do so I am a leader in the church but I also clean the church and um there's a big stigma around cleaning churches and you know just housekeeping in general I was a housekeeper for you know majority of my adult life um I was a housekeeper and that is actually how I made majority of my money when I was living in LA and to serve in that aspect is an extremely humbling experience don't get me wrong um But I also really learned that I can leverage my time so I can be talking to people, coaching people on the phone, of course, not on video um, while I'm cleaning and while I'm doing this. And I've learned how to multitask. So when I have to do tasks that I'm not necessarily thrilled I have to do, I try and make the most of it. I try and do as much of it as I can thinking about how can I serve these people better? You know, what's going to make them happy? And sometimes, you know, when with my other, you know, clients, I was like, I'm going to leave flowers here or I'm going to do something special to make them feel um, just feel happy when they walk into their home. And it touched a lot of people. And so really leading by example is about like leading by example to me looks like setting the example that you want to create if someone were to follow you. For me, number one is excellence. I do not want it if it is not done with excellence. And I actually am very hard on myself about this. Um, And I've had to learn the difference between excellence and meeting people's expectations. Ooh, very hard to differentiate because people's level of excellence are going to be different. Um, People's level of best is going to be different because there are some people that have the capacity to reach this really, 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 really high standard. And there are some people that their best is not quite reaching that standard because they haven't been able to expand their capacity, which is our job as leaders to help them expand that capacity. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like that's part of leadership is you have to be able to do those things. You have to be able to raise these leaders up and you have to be able to walk hand in hand with some of these people until they're ready to walk on their own, until they're ready to fly on their own. And it's a big thing. It's a really big thing. And I don't know why there's such a big disconnect. I think we have let a lot of my generation, Gen Z, and potentially a couple of generations before, um, we have not led by example. And so there is a lot of angry young people that are just mad at the world because they never had an example. And so they're trying to recreate a culture. They're trying to reform culture, but they're not able to reform culture because they don't actually know what real reformation looks like. Yeah, but they don't know what real transformation looks like. And so you have all these angry people that are acting out of anger, that are acting out of rebellion and really just dis- making more destruction when their intention is to change things and I understand like I completely get where a lot of these people are coming from they're hurt and they have no direction they have no leadership (laughs) and they're doing the best that they know how to because that is truly their mindset their mindset is I know that this is the cause that I'm fighting for but I don't know how to fight for it in the right way and they were never taught that so they just do whatever they want to do and we let them But that's not what a good leader does. A good leader says, hey, it's a big mess. Let me help you clean it up. Let me show you how to clean it up. 
And that is the big thing that people in this day and age that are in positions of leadership don't want to do. And I'm not saying this for across the board. Once again, please hear me. (laughs) I'm not saying this, that it is the, you know, all leaders are like this. I know all leaders are not like this, Um, but there are some and there are people that just don't want to deal with it. And so they just wash their hands of it and they walk away. And that is not real leadership. And so for me, leading by example is through excellence. Number two, as I just talked about, taking the time and taking the effort and helping people. That's part of it. It's servanthood. You have to be able to serve people in order to lead them well. One part of that is you're cultivating trust. Two, you're cultivating a non-judgmental place for people to feel safe. Number three is um, helping people understand and gain knowledge and gain wisdom, (laughs) which something our world seems to be lacking in right now is wisdom. These are things, key components that kind of are under the umbrella of servanthood. You have to serve people like I love serving the elderly because I know that they have so much wisdom that if I'm willing to listen they're willing to impart and I know that if I serve them well they're going to know that their words are not just falling onto dead ground and I I love serving my kids my little kids that are just so wild and crazy and know nothing about the world I love serving them because they are the next generation and not only are they the next generation they are the next leaders and i want to do my part in helping cultivate the leader within them that is what leading by example is i love serving my parents i it is very hard sometimes <laughs> because when you have lives that cross over like that you have your parents and are your pastors are your business partners are your business leaders are your boss and you're serving them and you're working for them and you're also in leadership position next to them. It's very hard, but I love serving my parents because I know that they, um, they, one, our values line up, our mission lines up and we, we work well together. And is it always easy? No, that's where persistence comes in. If you're you're not a leader, if you're not persistent, <laughs> and you're not a leader if you're not persevering, and you're not a leader if you're not after relationship. You're not a leader if you can if you, if something happens in a relationship and you're like it's broken, I'm walking away. That's not leadership because that is what many people have done. Oh, it's broken, you broke it. Bye. Like that's what a lot of people do and it's very unfortunate and it's very sad and that to me is not good leadership. Good leadership says, hey, you made a huge mistake and I want to help you clean it up. Let's, let's, you know, let's come up with a solution for this problem. Um, The other thing is, you know, there's that and, you know, in dance, I love serving my parents, you know, in, in ministry as a children's director, I love serving my parents. My parents say, hey, I need help with this. Hey, let me know. I will come over and I will watch the kids for half an hour so that I can, so that you can take a nap or whatever the case may be. Hey, you need a meal? I am so down to get you a cup of coffee right now. Hey, you need this? Let me be of service. And I want to give of my time. And that's the other thing about leadership. You have servanthood and giving. They kind of go hand in hand, but giving specifically means from a space of generosity out of the kindness of your heart. Giving of your time is a sacrifice. And being a leader looks like sacrifice. You have to make sacrifices if you're going to be a good leader. You have to do these things. These are things that are not easy to do, guys. Like these, like me and my friend talk about um, how hard leadership is. (laughs) And we say sometimes, man, it's hard being a leader. I don't want to be a leader right now. And we have moments like that. It's like when you don't want to do something, you know, you have moments of, I don't want to do this right now. Why would I do this? Like, I, I really am having a horrible day and I don't want to do this right now you have to set those aside it's a sacrifice to be a leader and it's also the greatest honor to be a leader and being a leader doesn't necessarily look like being the celebrity or being the one that's out on stage or the one that is the one with the microphone it doesn't look it doesn't always look like that nowadays anyone can pick up a microphone a microphone doesn't make you a leader your heart makes you a leader your mindset makes you a leader your actions make you a leader And that is the big thing. So 
for me, leading by example is so important. And it goes down to the golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. I mean, that's really the, what it boils down to. And if you're going to treat people like crap, then you're probably going to get other people treating you like crap. If you're not going to train your leaders and you are not going to help people rise to the occasion and you're not willing to put in that work, they're not going to put any work in for you. And people that are invested, leaders that are invested into people's lives are the ones that are going to want to give back. And not because they feel like they owe you something, because you have to make that clear as a leader. That's something for me. When I lead my business team, I tell you, there's no strings attached. I'm not expecting you to do this, but if you're going to be a leader, this is what a leader does. If you're going to be a business owner, this is what a business owner does. I'm going to teach you how to do this. And if you're not up to the occasion, that's okay. I'm still going to be your friend. And that's the problem with a lot of businesses and things like that as well, is that I've noticed when you say no to somebody, they kind of cut you off in some way because that's all they're thinking about. Leadership is relational. Leadership is a give and a take. Leadership is, you know, a relational thing. You make relationship with these people and that is how you develop leaders. That is how you develop these people. And just when, just because the student becomes the master, that doesn't mean that there's no place for you anymore. That means that you guys get to walk side by side leading at a same level and you continue to have more room to grow. And so it's not a competition of who's the best leader. It's, you know, not who's, you know, it's not a competition of, oh, this leader's a, a, a level one leader and this le- leader is a level 10 leader. It's not about that. It's about how do we get these people to rise to the occasion of what true leadership looks like and then walking it out together to see transformation happen that's when you actually get to see transformation happen is through unity and not through division unity is a huge thing when you are unified on one thing there is nothing that can stop you and when you are divided that's when competition starts to set in that's when jealousy starts to set in when you are like as a teacher i'll make an example this is a completely hypothetical example but if i were a teacher And me and a student had sat down, let's say a year ago and said, hey, you know, this is our goal for the year and this is what our plan is. This is how we're going to get to where, uh, you know, her goal is. Along the way, she becomes better than I ever was. If I allow competition and jealousy and anger and resentment to start to creep in, we are not unified anymore in the same goal. My goal was to help her reach her fullest potential. She's beginning to reach her fullest potential. If I'm the one that's not okay with it, then I'm the problem. And that is a huge thing in the dance community. Just, you know, a side note. And it it happens everywhere. People get to this point where like that person is rising to the occasion and now and sometimes it's because you're not growing as a leader if that person is rising to the same level as you cool then you get to walk hand in hand with them as then you know and if they're better than you great that is like my favorite part of leadership when i raise somebody up that's better than me i get so happy because you know why it means that they're going to reach more people and it means that they're going to do the job better than i ever could and i have to be self-aware enough and i have have to be humble enough to realize that I can't do everything in the world. They have something to offer and I have to let them offer it to the world, yeah? And if I I can not let and the reason why I say I have to let them offer it to the world is not in the sense that they, you know, it's up to them. But if I have been their mentor and I'm who they look up to, if I start to manipulate them to do what I want and what are in my best interests, then I'm not allowing them the freedom to be able to exercise what they need it to their fullest potential. And that is when things start to get messy, is when there's jealousy and division that creeps in that puts a wedge between the leader and the follower or the upcoming leader, and then it just gets all kinds of messy, and I really don't like it. So I know this has been a little bit, you know, of a tangent, but all that to say, if you are frustrated with the leadership around you in business, in, you know, whatever 
area of work that you're in, it might be because there's not enough people that actually know what leadership, true leadership looks like. And if you are in a space where you're saying they're missing this picture and there's nobody listening to you, you might have to be the one to rise to the occasion. And that's why me and my friend are, you know, me and my friend, we have days where we just amongst each other, hey, I don't want to be a leader today. Hey, girl, me neither. <laughs> like, and there are those moments, but we both know we have to stay here because who else is going to do it, right? Like, who else can offer what we have to offer? There might be somebody that can offer something that's a completely different thing, but they won't be able to offer it to us the same way that we would because we're all unique. We all have a unique complex. We all have a unique outlook and view on life. We all have a unique way that we look at the world. That's important because if we all are different and we all have something that makes us unique, there's a reason that we are all needed collectively. And sometimes it's not just about the one person and the one mind and this whole thing of one mind, one, you know, solution, one, you know, all these types of things. There's a reason that there are many um, mindsets and there are many views and there are many points of views when it comes to a big picture. Yeah. And so that's just something that's been weighing on my heart recently. I wanted to share it with you all. And I know it, I, I know this has probably been a little bit intense. I'm going to have to listen to it, go back and listen to it when I edit it. But, um, you know, I just want to encourage you, like you are a leader. If you're listening to this and you've made it to this point, you're a leader because you chose to take the time out of your day to say, I want to develop my leadership. I'm going to listen to what this girl has to say. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I won't. Maybe she's right. Maybe she's wrong. And that's the reality. And so I really encourage you to set the example. If you're a parent or you're a sibling or you are, maybe you're not a what constitutes as a vocational leader, whatever. Start leading by example. Start setting the example. If you are just an employee on the floor of Home Depot, make sure everything you do is with excellence. If you are a parent and you are saying, I desperately want to lead by example, but I don't have it in me, I promise you, you do. I promise you that with a little bit of rest and a little bit of Jesus and a little bit, even if you're not a Christian, you say, Jesus, help me. He's going to help you because he is no respecter of persons. That's my God. Um, But if you're a parent that is struggling to lead your household and your kids are going rampant and you are like, I don't know even where to begin, just start by taking one step. Take by take that one step. If you are somebody that is trying to get control of your finances and is somebody that is trying their hardest to do these things, I promise you, you can do it. Just take the step. The step is there, okay? I know it might seem like a huge step, but it's okay. You can make it. I promise. It's when you take that first step that towards setting the example as a leader and leading by example all these things that's when you become a leader sometimes being a leader takes one step and one thing and if you are somebody that is fed up with the way that you see the world and you know just what's going on around you whatever the case may be i'm not saying this as you know one side or another side if you are frustrated with the way things are run Take it into your own hands in the sense of how can I create a solution to this problem? Be a solution, not a problem. That's what we need in the world is more solutions. So I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. I know, again, this was a little bit more of an intense one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts. Um, I'd love for you guys to reach out to me um, on Instagram. I'm at the LA way. You can also join my 818 business chats group. Um, that is a group where I just kind of share my thoughts and, you know, they're a little bit um, candid and, um, you know, and if, you know, there's anything that you have questions on, please feel free to reach out. I would love to hear from you. Love you all. And I will see you guys next week with a brand new episode. Bye.